Welcome to Milmar. Today we're going to talk about trusses, some standard options, and what you need to know about them to make an informed decision when building your barn. First off, let's talk about the three main styles of trusses that are used. There's standard, there's scissor vaulted, and there's attic trusses. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of those. First off, we'll talk about the most commonly used truss by and large, which is the standard truss. It's typically a 412 pitch, and as you can see, has a flat bottom core that makes for easy attachment of a ceiling. The pros for a standard roof truss is that they're the most cost efficient and easiest to install and provide a nice flat surface for that ceiling to mount to. You might want to go custom though for more space with something like the scissor truss. Scissor vaulted trusses are nice for giving you extra space on the interior, but they do come with a few cons, and that is that it's a little harder to hang a ceiling on a scissor vault, so you use a little more material, a little harder to insulate on top of that, and install garage doors. But if you need that little bit of extra space or like the look of a vault, scissor trusses are a great way to go. A lot of people want attic trusses in their building to get extra room or a bonus room or a man cave above their barn. And while attic trusses are nice, they do add some extra cost and you want to be sure that it wouldn't be cheaper just to expand your base floor or even raise your wall height and get a second story loft to cost less than an attic truss. Typically attic trusses make the most sense in 40 to 60 foot wide buildings. Whereas if you get down to 30 foot or less, that room becomes so small that it's almost not worth the space and money and time required for those. Attic trusses are a fun way to add a bonus room above the barn. Just make sure that you're not spending extra money you don't need to when you could expand the base floor for the same or less cost. Let's talk about roof pitch on your trusses. Our standard building truss is a 412 pitch because that's the ideal pitch to get snow and rain to slide off well and avoid leaks, but at the same time reduce the amount of lumber and metal needed, thereby reducing cost. Sometimes you need a steeper pitched roof for either attic trusses, scissor trusses, or just because you like the look of a steeper pitched roof or to match an existing building. To give you an idea of what different pitches look like, here's a 412, here's a 612, and here's a 1212. Also remember that whether you're having a builder erect your barn or you're putting it up yourself, the steeper the pitch, the harder it is to work on. So labor costs will go up and time will go up. If you're on a very steep pitched metal roof, you have to be harnessed in, you have to have a lot of safety measures and it just takes longer to build. Now let's talk about spacing on trusses. Here at Milmar, we build eight foot on center trusses, four foot on center trusses, and two foot on center trusses. Typically, two foot on center trusses are built lighter and with smaller material than four foot on center, and the same is true for four foot on center to eight foot on center. So your biggest, heaviest duty trusses are the eight foot on center to account for those spans. Two foot on center is typically used when you're sheathing the top of the roof with OSB and shingles or standing seam, or if you're using an attic truss where people are walking and need that closer spacing for strength for that floor. Four foot on centers can sometimes be used for OSB sheathing and shingles as well with less lumber, but you have to make sure they're engineered correctly to hold that load. Eight foot on center trusses are nice because they sit directly on top of your eight foot on center support posts in your walls and reduce the need for heavy headers. But because of that eight foot span, you have to set your two by four purlins on edge to keep that roof solid and from sagging. Here at Milmar, every truss that we use is specifically engineered for the zip code that it's going to to make sure the snow and wood loads are correct. For instance, a truss built for down south may be a horrible fit for a northern Michigan building project that needs heavy snow loads for the winter and could fail if you're not checking that. Be sure to check that your trusses are engineered correctly. While we're talking about trusses, let's talk about roof overhangs. You can go with no overhang, 12 inches, or 24 inches as the most three standard options. Here at Milmar, our standard is 12 inches. Unless someone requests no overhangs, 12 inches is nice for pushing away water from the walls of the building and providing a place to vent eaves up to the ridge for insulating later. 
24 inch overhangs look like this and are a nice option to give your building a custom feel without a lot of extra expense. This is just a brief overview of trusses and their options, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and we'll be sure to respond.